any of us who spend time with someone who is dying, uh, there are many different things that happen different in every case of whoever you're with. The, the physical changes. So I don't know what happens to anyone. But I, this is my, this is definitely my feeling about, about myself. When it's gone, when it's no longer breathing, you know, I like the idea of like a, a tree being planted. So the tree could go down and go glug, 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 and get all the good stuff and make branches and leaves and hmm. Now, I'm glad if someone is dying and they, they, they see a blue light and then they go and they see people they love who have died before. Oh. Certainly I was raised with a particular kind of Christian Puritan mind-body split. The flesh is filth, the earth is filth, heaven, is, which is for the good people, is clean, very clean. And, um, and yet, you're, you're a body and you're all you have. I think that there was always a part of me that if I just went out in the backyard and I smelled some dirt and I saw a flower, that was so real and it was not eternal. Anyone who finds anything to help them with life that doesn't hurt other people, I'm glad. I'm certainly interested in whether people feel that there's a, a higher power of some kind. I, and I think although I said I had finally, thank heaven, lost my faith, oh, I do feel now, I don't think there's anyone there. Any scary, bad, huge, brilliant, anything like that. So what I feel is lucky that I could write poems, say about the glass of mucus. It's not that everybody would like to write that poem. It's just that I needed to write that poem. What does the old, the ancient Jewish philosopher say? If I do not bring forth that which is within me, that which is within me may harm me. And we haven't really put into ourselves a lot of what's within us. A lot has been put into us when we're children by our experiences. The last evening. Then we raised the top portion of the bed, and her head was like a trillium, growing up out of the ground in the woods, eyes closed, mouth open, and we put the battle arias on. And when I heard the first note, that was it for me. I excused myself from the death room guests and went to my mother and cleared a place on the mattress beside her arm, lifting the tubes, oxygen, dextrose, morphine, dipping in under them and letting them rest on my hair as if burying myself under a topsoil of roots. I pulled the sheet up over my head and touched my forehead and nose and mouth to her arm. And then, against the warm solace of her skin, I sobbed full out, unguarded, as I have not done near her. And I could feel some barrier between us dissolving. I could feel myself dissolving it moving ever closer to her through it, till I was all there. And in her coma, nothing drew her away from giving me the basal kindness of her presence. When the doctor came in, he looked at her and said, I'd say hours, not days. When he left, I ate a pear with her, talking us through it, and walnuts, and a crow, a whole bouquet of crows came apart outside the window. I looked for the moon and said, I'll be right back, and ran down the hospital hall. And there, outside the eastern window, was the waxing gibbous, like a swimmer's head turned to the side half out of the water, mouth pulled to the side and back to take breath. 
I could see my young mother, slim and strong in her navy one piece, and see, in memory's dark blue corridor, the beauty of her crawl, the hard, graceful, overhand motion, as someone who says, this way, to the others behind. And I went back and sat with her alone an hour in the quiet, and I felt almost not afraid of losing her. I was so content to have her beside me, unspeaking, unseeing, alive.